right, amen. So Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1, amen. So let's, let's get into the word this morning. I do have a word. I'm, I'm actually setting you up for a series that will begin next week, but we do have to go over a couple of things. Ephesians chapter 1, I want to let you know that no matter how many times I read this to you this year, you will not be able to fully digest everything in these verses that I'm giving to you. These are the verses for this year, the word that God gave us about this year, about fullness. And so Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to 23 And it says this, and starting in verse 15, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking, listen, so so I want to already break down verse 15. I'm going to try not to stay long here because I need to get to where I'm going. But it says, for this reason, listen, ever since I heard about your faith, in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints. So these people have faith and they love people, which very difficult these days to find people that have faith and love people, okay, because it's hard to love people. So listen, so I have, listen, but he says, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayer. So he's, he's saying, I'm giving thanks for you and I haven't, I haven't forgot about you guys and I keep praying for you, but listen to what he prays. He says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. So he says, I keep praying. He didn't say, I prayed once. He says, I keep praying that you may have the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and his incomparably great power for us who believe. Everyone say who believe. believe. That power. Everyone say that power. So the power that he's praying for them to have and to get revelation of and to to acknowledge this, he says that that power is like the working of his mighty strength which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Everyone say resurrection power. Okay. When he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Everyone say sonship. Say it again. Say sonship. Okay. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in this present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things, everyone say all things, under his feet and appointed him, Jesus, to be the head over everything for the what? The church. Everyone say the church again. Okay, God placed all things under his feet, appointed him to be the head over everything for the church, which is his body. Listen, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. The fullness of him who fills everything in every way. The fullness of God being released on the earth is going to happen through you and through me. That's how fullness happens. God releasing who he is on this earth happens through you and through me. We got to get this. I'm not I'm going to preach this till the day I take my last breath. We are the plan. You are the plan. So if God is going to be revealed, glorified, lifted up, He's going to be revealed through you. Now, Romans chapter 1 says there are definitely like, like, have you ever stared at a flower? Or have you ever like, you know, stared like I I brought up the, the thing about a caterpillar and all these things. God says we are without excuse believing that he exists. Because of the amazing creation that is around us. But as far as him receiving glory, people getting instructions, people receiving salvation, that is not going to happen with a caterpillar. That is going to happen with you proclaiming and declaring and being an example of the kingdom of God on the earth. That's how it happens. Amen? That's how things happen. My brother Albert is in heaven right now because... Robert, I mean, he, I, there he is, invited him to church. Had Robert not invited him to church, I don't know where he'd be as far as eternity is concerned. But Robert invited him. 
And when Robert invited him, Nini called him. And Nini said, oh, Pastor Albert needs you to go to the hospital. He's really struggling. He was brand new. It, how was Jesus revealed? Jesus was revealed through people. Jesus was revealed through persons. And you have to understand this. What God is going to do on the earth is going to happen through you and through me. I'm so adamant about this because we have to step into who we are. I believe in having fun. I believe in joking around. I went to Italy. I didn't preach in Italy. Man, I ate my brains out, hung out with my wife, saw all kinds of touristy people. I believe in having fun, recreation, all these different things. But make no mistake about it, you are called to bring glory to God on the earth. I sat in the steam room talking to a 30-year-old young man. Don't worry, we were all dressed because I believe that's weird. But, I'm just, but listen, so, but sitting there, talking to him, knowing his, his background, where he came from, and I said, hey, I know where you came from, so I just want to tell you some things. He had no idea in all his Christian upbringing about sonship, that God has called us to be sons and daughters, that God loves us and that, that you know, and, and, and that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life in all his upbringing. And, you know, he says, I've never heard anyone put it the way you put it. And you know what? The reason why I brought it up, because I heard that he was taking a trip. It was like a soul-searching trip to South Dakota to be with the Indians and all this stuff. And I just had to tell him, hey. And I could tell right there that he was, he was totally like, you know, I've never heard Jesus put that way. Man, people don't know. You got to tell them. Or we got to show it. We got to show the love. So listen, so fullness doesn't only have to do with how you feel and all these different, it has to do with other people. That's what fullness has to do with, and that's why God is calling us this year in 2019 to understand fullness. So one of the things, there's four things, and I'm not going to do, I'm not going to put them in the order that I've been giving them to you, but I'm, I want to tell you there's four dominant things that God has spoken to us about that he's really encouraged us, and I know that this is the word of the Lord for us. But the first thing is this, is that he, he told us in seeking fullness, in the fullness of God related to Ephesians chapter 1, number one, you need to seek and search God out on the gifts that are inside of you. All of you, every single person in this place, you were created with gifts. Every one of you. Last week, Eric, I mean, he's not here today, but Eric showed us one of his gifts as he was back there running the food and everything for Mother's Day. Praise God. You know, some, uh, 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 Keisha created those ribbons with her creativity and everything. She made those ribbons for the moms. She was using one of her gifts of creativity. But this has a double-fold meaning. Manny is an amazing drummer. He uses gifts on Sunday to, to praise Jesus with the drums. But I want to tell you, but you, there's also the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Oh, let me, let me talk to this side over here. There's also the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And many of us, what we highlight is like, oh, bless sister so-and-so that she cooked some peach cobbler. Amen? I'm making everybody hungry this morning. Listen, but, but you know, praise God. And we magnify that. And we don't magnify, oh, man, look at so-and-so. She just prayed over this person, and that ankle is completely healed right now. We need to talk about all the giftings that God has called you to walk in. Some of you have natural gifts. You know, like I was created to be a model. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. I'm, just, no, I'm, just, I'm a pre. I, I'm just joking. She's, she's visiting today. I'm just joking around. It's like, man, this guy is full of pride. No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm a joker. I'm a joker. Listen, but I, am I joking? I don't know. Just, I'm, just a, I'm so messing around. So. But, you, but we are created, Vince, Vince, I'm tripping, huh? <laughs> Vince, Vince is laughing, he's like, pastor shot out. Listen, so 
So I want to tell you that you were created with gifts, talents, and all these different things that you use. Some of you have cooking gifts. Some of you have hospitality gifts. You know, some of you have all these different gifts. I praise, listen, I praise God for shy that she is running the projector because many times new people come, they have no idea about the songs, and she's putting the songs on the projector, and I'm like, thank God for shy. But can I say this to you? Those are all good, and we need to use them for the glory of God. But can I tell you this? But God also wants you to investigate, holy, to say, Holy Spirit, how can you use me to minister power to a lost generation? How can you use me? You can't just identify the, 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 the natural gifts without also investigating the spiritual gifts. Come on, I want you to do that. I want you to investigate. Can I just tell you, you know, a uh, 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 repeated, I think I said it before, um, that, you know, Albert was talking with Heather and questioning whether he was called into the ministry. And Heather said, you have a powerful testimony. I believe you'll touch a lot of people. He was investigating the gifts of the spirit within him. Come on, y'all. Amen? So Ephesians 4.16 says this. I love this scripture. It says, he makes the whole body, Jesus, he makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. If every one of us does our part, we will grow. This isn't just my job. This is your job and my job. Amen? It's not the guy who ever standing here or the girl that's standing here preaching the word. It's all of our jobs. Come on now. Listen, what would happen to you if I, if, if I, I wish I had a chair and a person and just as an example. And what would, what would happen to you if I sat you in this chair and we all watched you just eat? and eat and eat. You don't do anything. You don't, you're not mobile, but you just eat and eat and eat. We just keep giving you food. What's going to happen? You know, and all you are is full of food. What good is it if we are so full of the word and full of the spirit, or we hear all these millions of teachings, and you do nothing with it? What is the point? Is it to feel better? Oh, man, come on. Yeah, we want to feel better. We want to be lifted up. We want to be, you know, we want to feel good. Yes, but you need to also start investigating how can I make others feel good? What about their soul? What about their life? Right? Come on, I'm not by myself this morning, am I? Come on now. So, so what happens is, is what begins to happen is that as you give out, you get poured in. As you give out, you get poured in. It's, it's, not, it's not rocket science. There's a reason why when you minister to someone and you're probably afraid, like, oh, my gosh, I don't know if I should ask this person to pray for them. And then you do, and you feel like a million dollars. You know why you feel like a million dollars? Because you were always created to minister to other people. We don't get it. We don't press through the fears of, of reaching out to somebody else and loving on them. Come on now. You'll feel like a million dollars because that's what God always created you to do. Amen? So investigate in the gifts in you that are dormant. Uh, Matthew 9, 16 to 17, I'm going to read this and, and I'm going to try to, to move on quickly. So it says, no one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch will pull away from the garment, making the tear worse. Neither do people, listen, pour new wine into old wineskins. If they do, the skins will burst. The wine will run out and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins and both are preserved. So let me just show you. I'm just like a visual person. I don't have a wineskin with me. But the bottom line is wineskins were created out of animal skin, mostly goat skin. So it would be like something like leathery like this where the, in, where the seal is sealed completely it's flipped inside out, obviously not the hairs, is, is, that's not the area that goes on the inside. And so what they did was they would store wine. So what happens with wine is wine what? Ferments. 
that means wine expands. And so when you create this new goat skin or this new wine skin, come on, church, it's a new wine skin. When that wine begins to ferment, this leather begins to stretch. And so the, the, the uh, wine skin stretches in proportion, come on, church, with the wine that was put in it. But he says this, he says, I, I want to pour out new wine. He says, but you have to be a new wine skin. He says, because if what I'm pouring out, if you stick with the old, he says, you're going to blow up. You can't handle this. He says, if you don't become a new wine skin, what will happen is I'm pouring out new. And he goes, this stuff is going to expand because it will expand you. But because you're stuck in the old, you don't have the capacity to hold the new wine. Come on, church. And there is new wine being poured out. What is God is speaking. God is, God is doing great things and new things. But a lot of times we are stuck in so many old ways. No, this is the only way God can do it. No, God can do it many different ways. And you have to be open to what he's doing now. Sometimes we play the same music over and over. Do you know that there are new songs being created right now? There's new songs. Like, like, like sometimes, I, you know, it irks me. I'm going to tell you something that bothers me. Is that cool? Can I confess today? I, I can't believe how some people say, well, that, in that song, that's, God touches me on that song. Like that song right there, we have to play that song or God doesn't touch me. Are you kidding me? You know how many new songs there are where writers are hearing by the Spirit of God and, 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 and being moved by God. Listen, be open. Don't get so stuck. Like, oh, no, this is the only artist I listen to. This is the only thing. Be open. Amen? Amen. I could, I could talk more about that, but I need to get to my point. So, so number three. So this, this is really powerful. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 to 10 and verse 12. It says, two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. Amen? A cord of three strands. And, you know, during this, you know, when I take a look at everything that has happened and transpired this past week, you know, so for me, when I think about this word community, we need to, one of the things that God challenged us about this year is, listen, learn how to get into community. And you know what I believe? I believe the church should be the first place that you look for community in. Why? Because you all have a common denominator. You have faith in Jesus Christ. And I'm not telling you to leave people out. I'm just saying to you, if you want to build community with people that have like faith with you, come on now then where are you going to go? You go in the church. And God has put you, if God has put you in this church, he put you here for a reason. He put you here to do something. And there's people around you that believe the way you believe. This is powerful. And so what happens is, is that, you know, Robert steps out and invites Albert from outside the community, he invites him into our community, and all of a sudden, he's inviting him, and Albert starts coming, and he starts feeling more comfortable, like, you know what, I think I can hang with this community and everything, so now he starts coming, he's dealing with cancer, he, he, now the community that he's in begins to pray for him and believe, do you know the text that I got in Rome when we were there? Heather said that the doctor said that the cancer in his body actually shrunk shrunk so community you know was was active in praying for him discipling him getting to know him and 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 all of a sudden heather comes into the picture now she this is her church she loves her church family see what i'm talking about community and now that we're in pain we could lean on one another in the middle of community come on now not everyone is going to share the values that you have outside of the community. I, I, you know, exercise with some people outside of my church community. And can I tell you something? What they talk about, uh, some of the things that they talk about, that's not what my community talks about. Now, I'm just there because I believe I'm sowing seed. 
you know, because just like this one young man that I spoke to, you know, and, and everything, and got to plant some seed and really encourage him. Listen, I, I'm telling you right now, he's going to be at our church. I already know it. I'm already praying for him. I got a laser beam on him. You're ready. You know, you're coming. You know, he's going to come to our church. You know why? Because I have the answer for everything that he's been searching for. His name is Jesus. And I have a healthy, listen, and I boldly tell you, I'm not saying in a pride, I have a, a healthy kingdom view of this Bible. I keep saying it over and over and over. Some of you guys turn, listen, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I think I'm getting, I don't know, as I get older, maybe I'm getting more rougher, I don't know. But some of you turn your TV on and there's people saying that, that, that the gospel of grace, the gospel of grace, look at your Bible. It doesn't say the gospel of grace, it says the gospel of the kingdom. Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom. Look at your Bible. Look at the book of John. Look at Acts chapter 1. Look at what Jesus said. Look at what Peter's travels. All these things. There's a reason why they use the word the kingdom. And you have to understand the way the kingdom of God works. That's what I'm trying to teach you. Amen? As we're going into all these different things. So this young man, he was part of a Christian church his whole life. He didn't know anything that I was telling him. And he's like, what you just said to me makes sense. Yeah, I know, because I'm, what I'm telling you is the plan of the kingdom. Amen? So Jesus, Jesus is becoming more illuminated in his life. So anyway, that's awesome about community. So let's go to the fourth thing that God uh, challenged us about this year. And so the fourth thing is financial empowerment. I want to let you know, or I'm going to read something to you that will help uh, uh, let, let's read the scripture first and we'll, we'll talk about it. Amen. It says Matthew 6, 24. Really good verse. A lot of you know it by heart. But it says no one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other. Or he will be loyal or devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Okay. Now some of your translations if you're reading from the NIV say money. Okay. That is not a, a, a full correct it does represent money, but it represents deceitful riches. The mammon, let me, let me just read to you what mammon is, and you can look it up on your own. Mammon is an idol of materialism. It is deceitful riches. It's the spirit of deceitful riches that lies to us. Amen? Isn't it amazing how, and I'm not going to get into this, how people flip the script when money gets involved. You can have great folks, and all of a sudden money gets involved. They just change. They just metamorphosize. You know, it's like all of a sudden it's just like, man, just the sweetest thing that looked like a little kitty cat turns into a devil, you know, and, 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 and when money is involved, you know. So mammon is a spirit. So he said you cannot serve God and mammon. You can't serve that spirit of mammon. You know why? Because the spirit of mammon that's deceitful riches is all-consuming. I remember in one of Denzel Washington's movies and stuff, I remember when he was packing away cases and cases of money, and I asked myself, I was like, well, what's he going to do with all that? You know, I'm just saying, so he's hiding it, and it's like in these big bricks, you know, there's millions of dollars there, and at the end of the day, it always gets taken away from them. Like, you know what I'm saying? So why do you, you know, I mean, I know it's, it's cool to have uh, millions and millions of dollars and stuff like that, but meaning, well, you're accumulating it, putting it in stash houses, and then you keep getting more and more and more. You know why? Because this is spirit. It's all consuming. It's all consuming. So let me read this to you. I wrote this, and it's just something that I, I just really believe. Um, I was going to try to sort of like uh, talk about it without reading it, but I think it's just better to read it. And this is what it says about money. Around the world, currency comes in the form of money, goods, and time. The value of currency is dependent on global markets, economies, and a set value system by a group of people. The value on something is actually placed on the desire of the person trying to obtain it. Make sense? Okay, the more widespread something is available, the less of a value it seems to have. No one cares about water until your water is off and you can't flush your toilet or wash your dirty dishes. Electricity is mindless and worthless until a storm comes and shuts off your power. 
Money is a powerful tool, and when respected and understood, can have a powerful impact on your future. The Bible strongly teaches on the principles of money and increase. The Bible mentions the word love 310 times. Faith, 389 times. Salvation, 156 times. And talks on the subject of money more than 800 times. Money would be a healthy topic in the church if the church had a better track record of teaching sound biblical principles without any form of manipulation, self-servedness, and greed. Let me read that again. Money would be a healthy topic in the church if the church had a better track record of teaching sound biblical principles without any form of manipulation, self-servedness, and greed. Money was made to serve you, but many people serve money. I'm going to teach them strongly on that. Money was actually made to serve you. You're not to serve money. Listen, their lives are wrapped around trying to attain the almighty dollar rather than attaining the almighty. Money has a unique ability of going everywhere. Listen, it has passed through the hands of drug dealers, prostitutes, churches, hospitals, government entities, and people. The same dollar could have been used in a dirty business deal and also used to help children struggling with cancer at St. Jude's Hospital. How do we talk about this topic without referring to the negative experiences we have all had in the church world? In this series about this topic that affects us all, I challenge you to drop your guard and start with a clean slate of belief in what the Bible says about this topic. I'm asking and praying that you would trust me when I say and declare that I am teaching this to you so that you would prosper and have the Father involved in your financial future. I pray for faith to arise in your heart to believe that biblical financial principles are real and that they will change your life just as much as understanding how to forgive others will or learning how to love others will. Amen? Amen. So there is a, um, um, you, you know, just for our visitors here today, I've, me and my wife have pastored here for five years. We have never had, um, and, and I give God the glory, and I pray that I can keep this going for as long as I'm alive. We have never had one incidence in this church of anybody questioning, like, you know, money or attacking me or saying I'm doing something funny with the money or anything. We have never had one situation. In our church culture, we do believe in teaching on tithe and offering. We don't push it down your necks. We don't push it, I mean, push it down your throat. You know, we just, you know, when we have a need, we just tell you like, hey, this is the need. If you can help out, great, and, and stuff. We don't put pressure. We don't do any of that garbage that says, you know, I believe there's 10 people in here that you'll, you know, you'll give $100 or anything like that. We don't do any of that stuff, right? Am I right or wrong? Okay, so, so there is a healthy balance and healthy view of finances in this church, New Dawn Christian Village. I believe you have a pastor who has a healthy view and outlook and a biblical outlook on the subject of money. I'm not trying to get something out of you. I'm trying to get something to you. Amen? And so like any good father would want their, their, their sons and their daughters to succeed, I want you guys to succeed the God, what God talks about money in the Bible is real, and you can't just you can't just look at the subjects of like, well, God loves me, or talk about lying or anything like that, and then and then you ignore what the Bible says about money. See what I'm saying? So the God, the same God who said, you know, John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever would believe in Him would not perish but have everlasting life, is the same God. That over here, that when he talked about finances, he's telling the truth. And can I say this to you? I believe firmly that God wants you to have victory over finances. One of the goals that I will be believing for in our church, I want us to be 100% debt free from any credit card debt. You should not be using your credit card except to be paying, uh, to be building up your credit. Come on now. We have a credit card. We use it to build our credit. We pay it off at the end of the month. If I can't pay for something cash, we do not pay for it. Do you hear what I said? And when I was in Rome, I didn't pay for anything on credit. I paid. I had it in the account, and I spent it. If we don't have it, we, we, we don't buy it. Come on now. 
And so we need to learn how to have discipline to get out of debt. Some of you blame the devil where you should be looking in the mirror. It's not the devil. It's not the devil. A lot of times it's just lack of discipline. Amen? So let me just set you up. And, and so what I'm asking you to do, I'm, I'm going to read some things. And what I'm going to ask you to do is, church, I want you to get ready for this series. I want you to just be believing, especially if you know people that are in debt or are struggling in the area of their finances. Invite them. They are going to get a healthy um, outlook and viewpoint of finances and, and how God uh, really does want to speak into their life concerning their finances. So, so ch- and listen, by the way, listen, can I just tell you this? A lot of the stuff that I'm going to tell you, I learned because I made the mistakes. Everybody in this place knows I told my story about 2007. My wife and I lost everything. We lost six homes. We lost our own home. We lost everything. I sold my refrigerator and stove to have enough gas money to drive the U-Haul truck from Tampa to Fort Lauderdale. Come on now. I don't know if you've ever had to do that, you know, where it's gotten that low for you, but I had to sell my fridge and my stove to have gas money. So I know what it means to be at the bottom looking up, okay? But what got me out? Biblical principles. Not my dad. Not, not somebody who was a sugar daddy or somebody hooking me up or I said, you know, no, it was Jesus. And it was his principles that got me out of that debt. Amen. So I'm going to teach you things by the pain in my life. I don't want you to have to go through, the, especially some of you younger ones. I don't want you to go through the pain that I went through. Listen, I loved my honeymoon with my wife. But had I to do it over again, I would not have put part of my honeymoon on credit. We, we spent like more than a year trying to pay those credit card debts off being newly married. That's not good. That's stressful. Don't do that to yourself. There's a lot of things had I to do it over again, I would have been simpler. But I was trying to keep up with the Joneses. It's just me and Joanne. Why did I need a 2,400 square foot home? What are we going to do in there? Run a marathon? You know what I'm saying? But it was just this mindset, you know, like, oh, man, so-and-so, you know. That, but anyway, I'm getting into my stuff. But listen, so, so listen, biblical, I'm going to read these things to you. Comment on them. I want you to just set your faith. Amen. How many, listen, how, I'm going to lift up my hand first just so you know I'm putting them out. How many of y'all want to be blessed? No, seriously, how many of y'all want to be blessed? Okay, put your hands down. How many of you guys want to not have to worry ever about paying a bill? Okay, put your hands down. How many of you would want to always have enough so that you could be a blessing to other people? Okay, cool. So I'm talking to the right people. Listen, so, so biblical and heavenly involvement for the prospering of God's children will always involve, listen, it'll always involve, I'm going to start with number one because this is the one that frustrates pastors the most. Listen, biblical and heavenly involvement for the prospering of God's children will always involve, number one, obedience. If you can learn to be obedient to God when he speaks or obedient to what his word says, let me tell you something, that will alleviate so many problems in your life. It will alleviate so many things. Quick obedience is amazing, okay? And I'm going to be sharing some things I'm going to be sharing some things with you, and I'm going to be transparent with you. And um, I'm not going to share this one. You guys aren't ready for it yet. But anyway, so listen. But, but, but obedience is important. It's important to be obedient. God, on, on, on the side of obedience, on the other side of obedience, God always has a blessing. There's always a blessing for obedience. Always. There's always a blessing of obedience. Let me just use a simple one, okay? If, if a woman is tempted to hang out with that man, but she's married, and she says no, what is the blessing? She, her marriage becomes stronger. Come on now, right? If the Holy Spirit says don't steal, some people call it borrowing, don't steal that package of paper clips from your company, even though you think they're, com- they don't, they're not going to miss it, and, and, and you say no to that, what you didn't know is that there's a camera set up 
they've been monitoring a lot of the, the stuff that's been missing, and you would have been fired just by a, a, a box of paper clips. There's always blessing on the other side of obedience. And that has to do with finances as well. Come on now. Number two is stewardship. What is stewardship? I am a manager. Everyone say manager. That's what a steward is. You are a manager of your finances. You are a manager. You know what the most funniest thing that people talk about, like Christians? And I'm, I, I just feel like I wish I had a sledgehammer that had a Bible on the end of it where I could just go, boom, and say, tell people, read your Bible. This is what they think. They think we're not under the law anymore where God says, you know, so, they, so we're not under the law, by the way, and I'm going to teach on this. But they say, well, you know what? No, the tithe, no, the tithe, you know that. Listen, you don't want to know what God requires of you in the New Testament. It's worse. It's worse than, the, in the Old Testament, he said, would you honor me with 10%? In the New Testament, he said, it's all mine. I want you to obey me <laughs> what to do with the money. Come on, now. I know it's quiet right here. Listen, I know you don't want to hear the truth, but the truth will make you free. And I'm not telling you, listen, I'm not telling you to do, and I'm just saying to you is that what's funny is that people look and say, oh, man, you know what, that, that's, that, that no longer exists, that 10% thing. Yeah, I know it doesn't. You know what? God says, it's, you belong to me. It's all mine. And if you read the book of Acts and how they handled money, because they handled it the right way, everybody had. Come on now. Am I preaching to myself? Listen, I want to be blessed, but I don't think I can achieve full blessing if my brothers and sisters around me aren't blessed. I want you guys to be blessed. I love testimonies of people being blessed. I want you to be blessed. When you roll up here in, 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 in the church and you got your new car, I'm, ha I'm the first one that's happy. I want you to be blessed. I want you to be prosperous. But guess what? Blessing and prosperity, one of the least things it is, is material things. We're going to teach on that. Because you can be, there's people that you would say, listen, because you can be prosperous but not blessed. Ooh, Jesus, come on, I'm getting into some good stuff. People can say, oh, he's prosperous, but it doesn't mean you're blessed. It doesn't mean you're blessed. Amen? We want to walk in the blessings of God. Amen? The third thing, I'm scaring a lot of you already, aren't I? I just, okay. The third thing, uh, so biblical and heavenly involvement for the prospering God's children will always involve faith. You need to have faith. The Bible is absolutely clear on having faith. Have faith in God. You know, believe God. Believe the Lord. Man, I, there's sometimes... My wife, we'll just talk about something, and we'll just say, you know what, Father, we just, you know, we, uh, there was uh, specifically this one thing that uh, we wanted to go to this special training, and it cost like a lot of money, to be honest with you, and, and I just said, you know, Joanne, I said, man, that's a lot of money, and I said, you know what, if God brings the money in two weeks, then I, I'll believe it's from him, and then we'll do it. God brought it in two days. And we were like, okay, we're going to the training. And it was a, it was a, it was a Christian thing. It was, a, it was a, a, a training and development for pastors. Amen? But I was just like, I'm not, you know, there's nothing wrong with asking the Father, you know, to bless you. I'm going to deliver some of you because some of you are like, oh, no, that's not holy. I, don't, I only pray for other people. I, listen, I pray for other people too, but I pray for me and my wife as well. And I pray for all of you. Amen? Let me tell you what you want. Don't sit under a pastor. This is for you. Maybe you go somewhere else. But don't sit under a pastor who doesn't believe in biblical financial principles. If he believes that spirit of poverty is holy, listen, guess what? It trickles down. Amen? It trickles down. Come on now. It's not, man, I could just keep going. Listen. Biblical and heavenly involvement for the prospering God's children will always involve sacrifice. 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 I'm going to tell you one. I'm going to tell you one that will bother some of you. And that's okay. Because I'm not ashamed, whatever. Because 
um, uh, this has to do with obedience. It has to do with sacrifice. Has to do with not too long ago. I'm talking about in the last three months. Um, we had spent money on Christmas. We had spent money on a whole bunch of things. I'm talking about we had spent just money. I just looked at our, like I looked at our account, and I was just like, man, we spent a lot of money. I'm like, what is this? I, I even started bothering Joanne, like, hey, what'd you buy over here? She's like, man, that's just detergent, you know? And I'm just like, okay. So, 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 <laughs> you know, I just like, what's all this Costco bill right here? I'm telling you, this is Costco bill's crazy and everything. So this is what the Lord said. The Lord said, and it was somebody in this church, the Lord said, give that person $120. And I was just like, man, I hate the devil, you know? I just, I'm just, I didn't say that. I knew it was the voice of the Lord. I'm just, I'm just joking. But I just was like, I was like, yes, Lord. So I go to this person. I said, hey, the Lord told me to give you $120. He's $120, right? I'm telling you three days later, I'm just driving, minding my business. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody calls me and said, hey, pastor, can you meet me at the supermarket? I was like. I was like, yeah, is everything okay? They said, yeah, this, I just really have something important to talk to you about. And I said, sure. And it sounded like really important. So I go to the supermarket, and they said, the Lord just told me to give you $1,000. Anybody happy for me? I mean, no, no. You, I didn't owe them anything. I didn't recently talk to them about anything that would promote them wanting to give me $1,000. This is what they said. They said three different times the Lord reminded me, give him $1,000. I didn't want to. They were telling me I didn't want to. I wouldn't want to either. They said, they said, but they said three different times the Lord said to give you $1,000. You know what the Lord reminded me? He said the 120. This is what he said. He said quick obedience. Quick obedience. There's always a blessing on the other side of obedience. Listen, don't judge when you don't know what someone else is giving. Sometimes we judge people like, oh, man, why is God blessing them? You don't know what they're giving behind the scenes. You don't know the seeds that they're sowing. Amen? I hope some of you are happy for me that I got blessed. But anyway, so listen, so generosity if you're going to walk in financial blessing and, and biblical prosperity, you, get, you have to learn how to be generous. You're looking at your pastor was one of the most selfish people ever. I used to hide my money. When my dad gave me allowance, I would never share my money. My, 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 my brother, my younger brother, God bless his heart. We would go to the delicatessen and he would tell me, he said, what do you want? I said, oh, man, I want a Mr. Juicy, and I want a, 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 a it was either devil dogs or a bag of uh, ranch chips and everything. He would use his allowance to buy me stuff. You know what I did with my allowance? I wouldn't share with him. I would hide those quarters, hide the quarters. When I got saved, Jesus took the stinginess and made me generous. Come on now. Listen, I'm telling you, I was selfish. I was selfish. And not only was I selfish, I was a hustler. I was always hustling, working something, working somebody to get something out of them. I'm being honest with you. Jesus changes the heart. Jesus changes the mind. He does. I was a selfish person. And I don't know where I got it from. My dad is a giver. He was a giver my whole life. Not me. I used to steal. Hide stuff? Come on now, anybody? Well, you, man, you all look like holy people in this place. All right, listen. So, 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 <laughs> none of you did all that. Okay, cool. Listen, so I'm the only one, but thank God for the blood of Jesus. Okay. All right. So let me talk about the last thing. Listen, if, if you're going to walk in, really, in the supernatural uh, financial uh, involvement of heaven in your life in the area of finances, you're going to have to trust God. You're going to have to trust him. If God tells you to do something, you got to trust him. And, you, and trust is developed. And as you begin to obey and step out in God, listen, you will, I told you the story. I was in a service, and I had just, I was a youth pastor. And 
the, 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 the offering was being taken, and I had just finished. Anybody remember when you used to do layaway? I know Kmart still does it. We used to make little payments. So I did at Zales Jewelry for a Seiko watch, $400. I did layaway, and I had just finished paying off. It's not this watch, but I just finished paying off the watch. And the Lord says to me, put your watch in the offering. I was like, oh, H-E-L-L, -L, no. I was like, no, 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 I am not doing that. I, there ain't no way. Now, listen, I'm just, I just spelled it out. I didn't say it. But listen, I was just like, I'm not doing that. I, told, I said, I'm not, I'm not going to put, why would, why would God want my watch? What's the big deal? No, I just paid that watch. Why would God want my watch? And all these people are going up there. They're going to the, the, the altar at this church, and they're putting, you know, finances down. The Spirit of God was moving and everything. And the Lord says, put your watch. I said, I'm not putting my watch. I just paid for this watch. I just wanted to have me one nice watch. I was a poor youth pastor. I just wanted to have at least one nice watch. Come on, man. This is ridiculous. Why are you going to ask me for my watch? And guess what? As I'm sitting there, I said, God... I said, I'm, I'm sorry, and I said, and I went up there, listen, I went up there, and I didn't even, you know, like, you'd think that I would have did, like, oh, sha da 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 ba listen, no, I went up there, and I was just like, man, it's, man, I just, I walked to my seat, I walked to my seat, I tell you, before Jesus Christ is my witness, I love supermarkets, but this guy called me, his name is Chris, he called me, he said, uh, and when I was a youth pastor on Mondays on my day off, I worked a side job. I actually worked with my dad to make extra money. And so, um, so on my day off, uh, he calls me and he says, uh, he says, can you meet me at Publix? Publix is an East Coast supermarket. He said, can you meet me at Publix? And I said, I can't. I got to go to work. He goes, well, what time you got to go to work? I said, such and such time. And he goes, well, meet me at 7 a.m. And I was like, man, first God tells me to give me my watch. And now he's waking me up early in the morning to meet somebody that wants to talk to me. And I'm like, you got to be kidding. I go over there and I'm telling you, he goes, he goes, hey, listen, this will be quick. And he takes out an envelope and he says, he goes, the Lord told me to give this to you. Ten $100 brand new bills. I tell you before Jesus is my witness that he gives this to me. And guess what? That was on Monday. On Tuesday, someone gives me the exact same watch that I had put on the altar. That's the truth. That's before God Almighty gives me the same. Every, everyone say this. Say, trust God. Listen to what I'm saying to you as I'm, as I'm preaching this to you. I'm telling you, church, I live like this. Don't think that I got everything together. I, I have to live by faith, just like you live by faith. But listen, it has to do with obedience, stewardship, faith, sacrifice, generosity, and trust. Seriously. And I would say that, and I'm, I'll be bold like this. If you can't trust me as I'm teaching this, like if you feel there's any shadiness, seriously, you should pray about whether... You know, like maybe you need to sit under somebody else. I'm, I'm being serious because if you can't trust the pastor, you, should, you shouldn't be at a church where you don't trust the pastor. I'm just going to tell you straight up. You should not go to a church where you're just like, man, I just don't know about this guy. Seriously. And if you feel like that about me, come and talk to me. We can have a conversation. Let me know your concerns and thoughts and everything. But I'm just being honest with you. This is, this is the word. This is, this, is, this is, there's some supernatural things that God wants you to have. Amen? So listen, so Esther, if you could just come on up. Um, I want you to stand to your feet, and we're going to close out in prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Were you guys blessed this morning? Okay. Yeah. Amen. Let me just say a prayer over you. This is going to be a great series. Amen. I'm telling you, there's a lot of topics you can talk about that sort of hit some people and don't hit others, but this topic hits everybody, amen? And so we want to we wanna learn how to walk in, uh, in uh, just the, the blessings of the Lord, and, and, and you know what, I'm talking to people that if you've ever been down or maybe you're in the middle of being down, listen, you're not going to stay down. I'm telling you, have faith in the Lord, He'll give you principles. You know, I'm, I'm talking about everything, saving money. We need to learn how to save. We need to learn how to handle our money correctly, use wisdom. Amen? Man, just using wisdom, there's, there's, there's so many avenues out there that are trying to steal from you. And you need to have wisdom. You can put people in your life that will help you in the area of your finance. I'm grateful that the Lord has placed 
different people over the years in my life to help me get out of my situation or even just to operate in a level of faith with saying, God, I trust you. Amen? Amen. So let's just pray right now. Father, I just thank you once again for, for this time together. And we do ask you in the name of Jesus, God, that you would minister your goodness, your love. Father, I feel your presence. I ask you today, Father, you continue to bring peace to those that are uh, grieving like I am, Father, in, in the loss of our dear brother. We thank you, Lord. We rally together and we thank you for this community called New Dawn Christian Village. We thank you for this community of healthy people, loving people. Lord, we desire to go to another level. And Lord, I'm praying and asking that as we go into this Next phase, there's been four things we've been talking about this year, but we haven't talked about this area, the area of finances. And Lord, you want us to walk in fullness in the area of finances. I believe that with all my heart. So I thank you, God, that you prepare us. We pray for the church, not just everyone here, but those that weren't here today that are traveling, Lord, Billy and Marilyn and, and Yenna and Kevin and Yeti, Elizabeth, people that, that are traveling right now. Lord, right now we ask you in the name of Jesus that everyone that's not here today as they come throughout these weeks and hear this teaching, Lord, on biblical financial empowerment. I ask in the name of Jesus that you would just minister to them. Let them hear by the ear, but with ears of the spirit, not the flesh. I also pray for healing over anyone that you've ever been done dirty, you've been done wrong, you've seen um, um, uh, people act horribly uh, with, with finances or, or any kind of thing that you went through a horrible church experience or an evangelist or something like that. I ask God for healing from that, but I also ask for our eyes to be opened up, illuminated to the power of the gospel and, 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 and what it involves. So we just thank you so much. If you're here today under the sound of my voice and you'd say, Pastor Irwin, you know what? I just, I, I need to be sure that I'm going to heaven. I, 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 you know what? I don't, I know tomorrow is not promised. And I just ask today that, that I just, I, by checking my heart, I'm just not sure about my salvation. I'm not sure about where I stand with Jesus, but I want to be sure today. I want to receive Jesus Christ into my life. I want to ask Jesus to forgive me for my sins. So if that's you today, if you're here today and you would say, Pastor, I'm just not sure, but today I want to turn my heart over to God. I want to serve Jesus. I want to become a disciple of His. If that's you under the sound of my voice, just right now.